Hey guys, it's Megan here. So I have a topic I'm going to discuss plus two questions that I have from two people. Um, so the first question is, I've always heard parents have a child with HLHS and then if they have a second child is more prone to have HLHS. Um, I really don't know about it. I do know that I have an older sister that's heart healthy and a younger sister that's heart healthy. I am the middle child um, and I have the heart condition. I don't know if you have another child, that child will have HLHS. I have heard that they might have another CHD, but I don't really know. Um, I don't know if anybody's done any research on it either, so I might look into that and see if there is that. I have met one dad, well I met him online, and he's had three kids with a heart condition. Well, I think it was only one that had HLHS, I'm not really sure, I'll have to talk to him again. But it's not very common that the next child is going to have another heart condition. Um, but I will look more into that for you. The other question she had is, um, like if I had a baby with, if I had a baby with that person, with that child have heart condition, I am more likely to pass it on. Um, I've been told few different percentages. I don't know which one's correct. I've been told 3% chance, I've been told 7% chance, and I've also been told 10% chance. So I really have no idea the percentage that it'll be that I can pass it on. But I do know that I do have a higher risk of passing on a CHD to my child when I do have children. Um, so that will be interesting when that comes around. Um, to see if I do pass it on or what I pass on. Um, the next question is, does anybody, anyone know of someone with HLHS that already has children? Um, I did talk to one lady a long time ago. I forget her name. I'll have to look her up again. Um, she had a child, and she has HLHS, and she gave birth naturally without a C-section which was awesome. She said she did have a very difficult time um, and that she was at more risk, but I don't really know if anything happened to her or the child. Also, I will look into that one as well and see if I can find her again. Can't remember her name at the moment. So the topic I'm going to talk about today is living on my own without parents. So when I graduated high school, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So I decided to go to a community college, which was close to home. So I stayed home, and I took a few classes there, and I finally figured out what I wanted to do. It went from teaching to photography to psychology. So that's where I am now, is psychology. So then after I finally figured that out, I applied to um, a bunch of different places, and I had a few friends that went to Trine University in Indiana, and so I applied, and I liked the the smallness of the university. Um, only about I think it's now up to three grand, three grand, three thousand students there. So it's a very small school, and everybody really knows each other, pretty much, um, which could be good or bad, but. I had a great experience there. Um, so after I transferred, I started at Trine University in 2011, um, that fall. And that's actually also when my sister started, since she just graduated that year. Um, so we went there together. We didn't live together at first. Um, I had my own friends. She had her own friends. It was fine. I mean, it's nice that we had family there that if I needed to talk to her, my sister, it'd be great. And if she needed to talk to me, it'd be awesome. Um, but it was far enough away from home 
that the parents didn't come every weekend to check on me or or if I wanted to go home, I could go home. It was about two, two and a half hours away. So it was perfectly far enough away for me. Um, I mean, like I said, it was close to home if I needed to go home. But so there I lived with, let's see, my first roommates. So I lived in the apartments which you have two rooms and you share like a common room and a bathroom. Um, there's no kitchens there. It's more of a go to the uh, cafeteria to eat and meet everybody. So I had my roommate and then we had two other roommates that I didn't know. But my roommate I knew. Um, she was awesome, had a great time. Um, and my sister and I lived in the same building. But I was on the third floor and she was on the second floor. But still, it wasn't like I was living with my parents. I was at college. Finally at college. Um, and it was awesome. I met a lot of awesome people. I made friends, lost friends. Um, it was a great time. Then the second year, well, in the middle of my first year there, there was some difficulties and I ended up moving out of my apartment and in with my sister since she had an open room. So we lived together, which was great. And um, it was kind of like home, but not really. Like We lived together, but we weren't with our parents. Um, so we could still do college-y things. Anyway, uh, then that year ended and then it was the next year. And we decided to live together with two other roommates. Um, I think it was Shelby and Jessica were their names. Um, I was roommates with Jessica. She was roommates with Shelby. That became our group of friends, basically. It was awesome. I love, love them dearly. Um, and it was a great time. And again, living on my own without parents was awesome. So then another year passes and time for me to graduate. So it's December of 2013, and I am done. I had to move out uh, the end of that semester, which was bittersweet. It was awesome that I was finally moving on, done with college, got my bachelor's, woo, done. And then it was sad to leave because... I made so many good friends and it was awesome. And so I packed up everything and I left. I moved home for about a week and then my boyfriend Billy flew in from California. Since we were long distance, we were long distance for about eight months um, while he was going to school in California. So then we decided that I was gonna move with him after I graduated college. So I graduated, moved home for about a week, and then after Christmas, the day after Christmas actually, I moved to California. Um, we drove from Michigan all the way to Oceanside, California in two days. It was exhausting, but it was great. And we finally got there and it was a sense of I'm actually on my own like without parents and I mean yeah the trip was long well two days it seems long we probably could have made it even longer but we just wanted to get there so we had a place already and right by the ocean it was California dream um, and loved it I mean then I uh, started working and he was still going to school and then bills and everything starts happening and you're actually an adult and it's hard at first very hard um, rent have phone bills insurance car payments everything and you add it all up and you're like I don't make enough for this so, I mean, it's great living on your own, away from parents, but there's times where you're like, oh, I wish I was home. I didn't have to pay all these bills. But, I mean, 
That's what happens when you grow up. You have to pay your own bills. So, and then he graduated from his school and he got a job out here in Las Vegas. So then we moved again and we had to find another place. So we did, and we had to do it really fast because we only had a one weekend that we could go and look. And that was the only time we had. So we did and we found this place and I do love this place. It's just not big enough for little Leela over there. She's uh, right over there. But she, um, she's a little goofball that likes to run around. And this place isn't really a place for her to run. But um, I'm so glad that there's a dog park right down the street from us. And I mean, yeah, living on your own. And moving out of state was hard because you go from college and you have this group of friends that you're really close with. And then all of a sudden you move and all your friends are not there. You are only with my boyfriend. I'm only with him. So then I did make friends. I made friends through him, through his friends at school who had wives or girlfriends. I made friends with them and... We still stay in touch because California is only five hours away from us. So we can really go back anytime we wanted to to see them. Now, when we moved here to Las Vegas, that was hard because I didn't have a job yet. And Billy was working. And yeah, he has friends at his job now. But it's still really difficult because everyone's already set in their ways. Everyone already has their group of friends. So then I started going to the dog park more and more with Leela, and I met this girl who has um who's now engaged. Um, but now we go on date nights with them, like a double date. And it's awesome. I'm so glad I found a group couple friends. And then the people I nanny for, um, I met a student teacher at one of the girls' schools, and we hang out sometimes. So it's hard to make friends after you are not in college, which I've understood a lot. Um, but living on your own is hard at first. I mean, yeah, it's still hard right now, but we're getting through it. We're not in the careers we want to be in yet, so it makes it a little harder. Um, he's still working towards head professional at his job, and I'm still working on my master's. And it's weird working on my master's and not actually going to class because um, it's online. So I'm not really meeting anybody through school either. But living on my own has been great. I feel like I've grown up a lot since college. And I'm glad I did move away. Yes, I miss my family and my friends dearly and lots. But it's not like I'm... I'm never going to go back and see them, or they're not going to come here. So I will see my friends and my family. So, yeah. If you have any other questions or another topic you'd like me to talk about, comment on this video. I'm sorry this video is so long. I just had a lot to say. Um, have a great Sunday.